not been for the Lord who was on our side. Hallelujah, church. You want to wave your hands unto the Lord. Ah, somebody is a time and a season to be grateful if it had not been for the Lord on our side. Hey, this morning, let every other name fade away. Let the name of shame and sickness and reproach and setback fade away this morning. You want to give the Lord a resounding worship this morning. Church, you want to bless the name of the Lord. Magnify the Lord with us this morning. We want to bless.
to the Lord this morning, church. I can hear your worship in this place. He deserves all our worship. He's an awesome God, one more time, our God. God, he reigns from heaven above.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You want to put your hands together for the Lord? Oh, are you doing better for the King of Kings? And the Lord of Lords. You want to add a shout of praise and celebrate the Lord. It is always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Psalm 84 verse 7. Say they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion. Appeared before the Lord. As you have appeared, the Lord is promising you some strength as you go back. And all your response is just open your heart. And you will live with something tangible. Hallelujah. You want to put your hands together for the Lord and take your seat. We are coming to you live from the Paris Dome. From the seat of our father, the archbishop. I want us to take a moment and celebrate him. He celebrated his birthday just a few days ago. Please let's, let's rise to our feet. Oh, let's rise to our feet and celebrate our father. And our mother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some men of God who turn into cats and dogs. But this is a very precious man of God. You want to put your hands together? Oh, celebrate our Father. Hallelujah. Kindly take your seat. Your life will never be the same. Amen. Quickly, I want us to take the testimonies. Let's put our hands together for the man of God. Good morning, church. Thank you, the Lord, the mighty clap of friend. We have a very wonderful testimony this morning. It goes like this. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And coming from the father of lies. With whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. James 1.17 My husband and I got married in June 2020. It was a beautiful and simple wedding due to the odds of COVID-19. We joined the parish chapel in August 2020 when the COVID-19 restrictions were eased. Bishop Dr. Selassie, Reverend Gifty and Pastor Michelle encouraged us to join the department. They specifically encouraged me to join the Kingdom Kids Department, which I did and continue to serve diligently. 
I love children and long to have a child of my own. Yet, within two years of our marriage, we experienced three miscarriages. Me do mo fre ye pa enti enso no me wari ebe enfie mi enu mu na ye nyamba. One evening after a powerful encounter service, we met with Bishop Elvis Kesey of Victory Bible Church International of Boise. That ko ye ne e ye oso bo pon Elvis Kesey a wo Victory Bible Church e wo Boise shia ye. He prophesied to us that God was going to give us a miracle baby boy. Na o she ye nkom se Yakobo e ba be man e nsenche ni ba be ma. This prophecy came amid the storms of childbearing. As we had already experienced the first miscarriage, and I was pregnant for the second time. We received the word of God with faith. Nevertheless, not long after, I had the second miscarriage. My hopes were almost dashed. But, but the Lord spoke to us in the dream that all hopes were not lost. Amen. I conceived not long after, and after 20 weeks of a difficult pregnancy, I had the third miscarriage. I had the third miscarriage. This was a major blow as the baby was perfectly formed. It was a girl, and we named her Rahel. On the hospital bed, I poured my heart in prayer to God. I told God that it is He who promised us a child, and we will wait for His timing. If he does not give us a child now, we are content and we will still serve him faithfully. All the days of our lives. I completely surrounded my desires to God's perfect timing. Thoughts of resuming church service, work, and other activities without a baby. And having to explain myself to people flooded my mind. It, it was not easy. But in these moments of weakness, God's presence was strong with us. Three days after I was discharged from the hospital, I dreamt that while serving at the Kingdom Kiss, a beautiful boy followed me. I had him and told him I will come for him after one year. These dreams strengthened our faith and service to God. We resumed church and served wholeheartedly in our departments. I conceived again, and in this time, on that 20th week, we visited, we visited Agbishok Charles Agnasari and Mama Vivi. After church service to pray with us, Bishop Dr. Selassie prayed with us always. And we updated him constantly on the progress of the pregnancy. People of God, a little over a year. Just as I told the little boy in the dream, the Lord blessed us with a miracle baby boy on Sunday. On, on Sunday, 26 March 2023, God's time is always perfect. Our beautiful baby boy is a living test 
living testament of God's faithfulness. We want to thank the Lord for showing us his mercy and faithfulness. We also want to thank God for Perez Chapel International. The Archbishop Charles Aginasari and Mama Vivi. For their prayers and support. Archbishop Dr. Selassie. For all the prayers. Pastor Services. And, of, and officiating the naming and dedication ceremony of our precious miracle boy. We thank Reverend Gifty. And Pastor Michelle also. And also for Michelle and Sonswasi. Who truly have been shepherds. Used by God to guide and guard us. Amen. Let's give the Amen. Lord the mighty clap of praise. Let's do it better for the Lord. Who we'll give praise to the King of Kings. Every testimony is the statement of prophecy that if you would dare believe, you can get the same testimony. Before we get into the offering, we are live on YouTube, Your YouTube. and Facebook, Any Facebook with the name at the Perez Dome. We are also live on Precious TV, yes, also Precious TV. and KFM TV. Any KFM TV so, so. If you just joined us, stay tuned. Your blessing is on the way. We so I thought you would say amen. amen. Offering time. Please kindly be on your feet. Prepared offering. And if you have it, kindly lift it up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the seeds in our hands. We show it believing for returns. Thank you that you will honor your word in our lives. In Jesus' name. You can give on star 800 star 1000 on all mobile networks with no transaction fee. You can also give on MTN with the number 0243 624 624 0243 0243 500 6224-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0204-0
Church, you want to put your hands together? Hallelujah. Second service, this clap offering is not unto the one sitting next to you. It is unto the King of Kings. And if you have the breath of life this morning, you want to be on your feet and shout and shout and scream unto the Lord for I don't know about you, but there's joy in the house of God.
The Lord, a mighty clap of the ring. And put your hands together for the choir. Or you can do it better than that for the choir. For those of you who like loud music, I insisted to the sound engineer that they shouldn't go above 80 decibels. It's been proven that when you keep hearing sound above 80 decibels, you destroy your eardrums. And so from this time in the church, but you had a very good sound. The sound was good. That is how the sound is supposed to be. Okay? There are a lot of people who've gone to church and their eardrums, but while, while, whilst growing, their eardrums are destroyed. Because we go to church and we open the sound. Ooh. From this time, you are getting 80 decibels and below. Amen. And it gives you distinct sound. And it's the sound that you need to sustain your hearing into old age. Lift up your Bible. Say, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. It has the power to change my life. And to give me an inheritance. Amongst all the saints. I'm not a hearer only. But I'm a doer of the word. Wave your Bible at me. And shout hallelujah. Oh, you can do it better than that. The, this morning in the first service, we were tremendously blessed. We received the ministry of one of the sons of this ministry. Was saved in this ministry. Went to Bible school in this ministry. Was received into ministry by the age of 21. He's been our pastor. He's pastored different churches. Became the, our French pastor, the pastor of our French church. Planted churches in 12 nations. Amen. Amen. Traveled to over 30 countries of the world. Preaching. He, he, he is the senior pastor or the bishop of our Zoe Mataiko church. And the administrative bishop of all the Perez Chapel churches. Help me welcome Bishop Raymond Aqua with a mighty, mighty clap of
let's do it better unto Jesus. Church, let's put our hands. Oh, today is Palm Sunday. Can somebody show your excitement in church? The 80 decibels Papa was talking about does not affect your voice. Please clap your hands, raise your voice, give the Lord a shout in the house. Wow, what a day. Let's thank God once again for this opportunity to be here. Amen. Papa, thank you very much for the opportunity. The boy, God led you to save 20 something years ago. I stand on your pulpit today. As a bishop, you have consecrated. Thank you. I want to say a very big thank you to you for everything that God has used you to do in my life. Time will fail me to say all I want to say, but you know I'm grateful. And I remain grateful. Thank you very much. And I want to say a very big thank you to Mama for all that God has used you to do in my life and in my family. The encouragement, the corrections, the finger. Anytime when we have issues and my wife come and tell Mama, or how Once he does the finger like this, then you know you better sit up. <laughs> but mama, it has been a blessing to us. Please help me celebrate my mother. Help me celebrate our auxiliary bishop. Oh, are we clapping our hands this morning? This is church. Can we have some excitement in church? We want to celebrate all the pastors, all the leaders. Amen. Before I continue, I came with a team of people. Our chief elder and some of our church board members are here. Please wave. Please help put your hands together. Let's celebrate them. And some of our guys, my first son is here. Also, amen. Amen. You didn't wave. Shall I? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and by the grace of God, I'm also here with my wife. This year we'll be married for 20 years. <laughs> and I want to say a big thank you for your support and all that you've done in my life so far. Amen. Amen. This morning. The way you look, everybody was saying you are beautiful. It's because I've also done well in your life. Can you please, in the next few minutes, just lift up your hands and just say thank you to the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Let's give him praise. Just thank him. And say with me, say, Father. Please, say, say with me, say, Father. Say, Father. Father. This week and beyond, let your mercy come upon my life. Say it again. Say, Father, this week and beyond, show me mercy on every side, in every area of my life, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and ask for mercy. Ask for mercy for your family. Ask for mercy for your children. Ask for mercy for your career. Ask for the mercy of God for your health. The mercy of God on every side. The mercy of God. Father, show me mercy. Show me mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for your mercies. Lift up your hands once again. Say, Father, show our Father mercy. Say, in the name of Jesus, open the windows of heaven and let your mercy, I can hear you shout, let your mercy overshadow his life, overshadow his family, overshadow his health, 
in the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray for Father. Lift your voice and pray for Father. The mercy will prevail. The mercy will speak for him. That mercy will be his portion. In his health, he will enjoy mercy. In his ministry, he will enjoy the mercies of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody clap your hands and shout a big amen. I can hear you clap your hands and scream a big amen. Please be seated. Matthew 21 from verse 33. Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and dig the wine press in it and built a tower. And let it out to husbandmen. And went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants, the husbandmen, that they might receive fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his. And the husbandmen took his servants. And beat one and killed another and stoned another verse 36 and he sent another servant more than the first and they did unto them likewise but the last of all he sent unto them his son saying they will reverence my son. But when the husband man saw, saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the head. Let us kill him and let us seize on him. let us seize on his head inheritance in this scripture God can be likened to the husband man or the property owner he's the householder the husband man is the workers which represents us as Christians the servants and the son he sent will stand for God's servants or the ministers in the house of the Lord. This landlord has put in all of his efforts to build something very great and entrusted it into the hands of people and when it was time for him to reap from his labor he sent his workers including his son to go and bring him what he deserves but the bible says the workers dealt treacherously with him they brutalized the people he sent when they saw his son rather than honoring him they decided to kill him in fact the intent of the master for sending the servant or the son was it, it, the bible says that they will reverence him but that did not happen it is possible to acknowledge somebody as an owner but not give him the honor he deserves. Acknowledgement of one's ability one's giftings one's calling is not the same 
it's not the same as honoring the person this parable teaches us some very important lessons from this parable we learn that the people were only interested in what the man has done but they were not interested in the man's life neither were they interested in the servants or his son Jesus Yesu gave this parable and also to teach us that he values honor that honor is important to God and honor is a very dear thing to the heart of God. When we talk of honor, we are talking about we are talking about the celebrating and the rewarding of uniqueness. Excellence. Excellence. It is the celebration of a person's usefulness and value. Excellence. One thing we should never do in life is to dishonor a person that God had decided to honor. Anyone God has honored, you stand blessed when you honor the person. You attract God's anger when you dishonor a person that He has chosen to honor. In fact, when you dishonor people that God has honored, God takes it personal. God reacts in a very unfavorable manner towards you. Amen. 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 Oh. Church, amen. Asafo, amen. If you are here with me, wave your hand and say amen. In fact, when a person God has honored is dishonored, the person feels grieved. The person feels unhappy, unappreciated. The person does not have to say it. I, I feel grieved or unappreciated. And once a person feels grieved and dishonored or disappointed that he or she is not properly honored, if God is the one that honors the person, God would also feel the same. I give you two quick Bible examples. In Genesis chapter 20, Abraham introduced his wife Sarah to Abimelech as his sister. And Abimelech thought that if it's your sister, then let me make moves. So took Sarah into his bedroom. Before he could have anything to do with Sarah. God warned Abimelech in a dream. Said, Abimelech, you are a dead man. You are a dead man. Because the one whose wife is beside you or the woman beside you is the wife of a prophet now note that the bible didn't say abraham prayed abraham didn't complain but the fact that he felt grieved or unhappy in his heart God reacted it is my prayer that in Perez Chapel our leaders will always be happy because we honor them I said anytime our father stands here and he sees you in particular may excitement jump up in his heart can I hear somebody say a better amen. Abraham lied that Sarah was his sister. Abraham didn't trust Sarah in But it didn't matter to God. Because even if she was a sister, you don't dishonor a man God has honored. 
taking anything that belongs to him I believe if Abimelech had even taken a sheep from Abraham forcefully God would have reacted the same way because once God has honored the man you don't dishonor him may you never dishonor the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ hey this is the Perez dome I said may you never dishonor anybody that God has honored in the name of Jesus in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 he talks about children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right honor thy father and thy mother and he talks about the blessings that follows now anytime you dishonor your parents physical parents spiritual parents something is activated in the spirit now when you dishonor your parents they don't have to say anything they don't have to pronounce a curse they don't have to say you will suffer the fact that dishonor is introduced God reacts I pray for somebody here today by the mercy of God any dishonor that has invited anything evil into your life today and uh, may it be taken away by the blood of Jesus every whole yes, I said any dishonor say, that have introduced negativity in your life I, they are the bunny, as you sit under this grace may that thing be taken away by the blood of Jesus so when you dishonor your parents they don't have to react God reacts. God reacts. Second Samuel chapter 2 verse 30 he says Samuel, I will honor those who know. honor me. So dishonor is something that God hates. In fact one of the signs of the end times one of the signs of the end times we always talk about the wars nation rising, nation rising against nation fighting here, fighting there famine, pestilence but there is also another sign of the end times which is hidden in dishonor in 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 but for the sake of time let's read only the verse 3 verse 3 he says without natural affection so he says in the last days people shall be without natural affection they shall be truth breakers false accusers incontinent fierce despises of those that are good so people who are good and should be honored, they would rather despise them. This is one of the bane of our generation. Despising people who are good. Refusing to honor people who deserve honor. Refusing to give people their due. It is a sign of the end times. It is a sign that something is about to happen in this world. But in this church, God is raising a new generation. Uh, I saw only seven of them. I said, God is raising a new generation. We shall be a generation that knows how to give honor where honor is due. If you are one of such people, clap your hands and shout, I am the one. So dishonor is a sign, prophesied, that we should guard against, we should forfeit. Is it 
impossible to honor God and dishonor his servants. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. The workers, they acknowledge that the man was the owner, but they dishonored the servants and the son. Is it possible to dishonor someone without knowing you have dishonored them? Is it possible? Yes. Is it possible that as a member of Perez, I could have dishonored my father? We may have dishonored the archbishop and not even realize that we've been dishonoring him. Is it possible? Church, is it possible? May God help us. I said, may God help us. Now, acknowledging a man's gift is not the same as honoring the gift. When you walk into this room, we all acknowledge who the pastors are. Acknowledgement is only a subset of the term honor. But acknowledgement in itself is not honor on itself. So we acknowledge our father is anointed. Do we acknowledge that? Even unbelievers acknowledge it. Even people who don't like him, they acknowledge that the man is anointed. We acknowledge he's a good teacher and preacher of the word. We acknowledge that he's a man sent from God. But acknowledgement is not enough. Based on our acknowledgement, some of us are here this morning. But whether what we acknowledged will be beneficiary to us or not, we must move beyond acknowledgement and step into an atmosphere of honoring the oil. If you are clapping your hands, may the Lord bless your life. Most people are only interested in what the person carries. Most people relate because of who the person is and what the person can do for them. But most people care less about the personality of the person. So we are here because we are anointed. But we are not, we don't really care how your life is. We don't really care whether you live in in a single room or you live in a hamlet or a mad house that's not our problem just come and bless us as for you god will take care of you but the container is as important as the content uh, i said the container as, uh, is as important as the content if you step out this morning to buy a bottle of water and you find out the, the, the water they are selling even though it's properly bottled clean FDA approved but the water and its container it's in some in a dustbin and the one selling picks it and gives it to you that this is water please will you still go ahead and buy it Talk to me, church. We need to go ahead and buy. It. Why? Because even though it is the content you need, the, the condition under which the content is packaged is also important. That's why Paul said, We have this treasure in acting vessels. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. We have a treasure in an acting vessel. Church, we cannot only be interested in the grace and the anointing upon our Father and not be interested in His person. 
I pray to God. May God raise some people in this house who will see it as their duty and responsibility that we will keep the container clean. We will keep the container well shaped. We will keep him in a better place so that the content will continually flow upon our lives. If you are one of the people God is raising, lift up your hand and shout amen. I can't hear that amen. Shout a better amen. Dishonor. You can find some of these things in his book. Um, the law of impact. The law of impact. Dishonor is trivializing the value of a person. Everybody in life has a value. You can't receive a man of God like you receive any other person. When you trivialize a person's value, you have dishonored him. Dishonor is to take for granted and to lightly esteem a person. Deliberately refusing to acknowledge and to honor a person for what God has made them is dishonor. Reducing the reward and the blessing you should give to a person is dishonor. At me standing here as Raymond, if I go to Mama Vivi and say, Mama, I want to honor you, and I give Mama Vivi 20 Ghana CDs, it is my own money, but I've dishonored her because everybody here has a level, everyone here has a level, oh, and you can't reduce. The level of a person for some people that 20 Ghana cities may be a very powerful gift, but by the grace of God, with the little mercies I've seen, to go to my mother and say, Mama, I've come to honor you, and all I could give you is 20 Ghana cities. That is an insult. Is somebody understand what I'm talking about? My, my friends have reduced in the church. Is somebody here with me? So when you reduce a person's reward and blessing, you have dishonored the person. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, I said, may the Lord help us. Lift up your hand and shout, Lord, help me. Say it again, say, Lord, help me. In the Old Testament, we see different scenarios of dishonor. Let me just... For the sake of time, let me just mention number one, Noah and his sons. You can find that in Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 to 27. Hagar and Sarah. You see that in Genesis chapter 16 and verse 8. And then you see Moses and Miriam. You can find that in Exodus. Elisha and the children. Who mocked him. Please, let's take note of these few points. If you learn honor, if we learn honor, honor will give us access to every door in this life. Doors are access in this life by the level of honor we give. In fact, even God, he relates to us based on the level of honor we give him. And so, as we honor, know that honor opens doors. I stand on this exalted altar. And I release a prayer. That as you step into the aroma and the arena of honor. May every door that must open in your life be open in the name of Jesus. Any door that nobody was able to access in your family by the mantle of honor 
father you know how to honor you shall access those doors in the name of Jesus Christ lift up your hand and shout a better amen honor is not a gift there is nothing like the spiritual gift of honor nobody was born with the gift of honor honor is a virtue you imbibe it is something you learn it is something that must be taught and it is something you catch it is something you catch it's something you learn that I will give honor to whom honor is due one of the terrible dangers in this generation is that we are gradually losing the value of honor honor is being eroded day by day people teenagers are able to put cameras on them on themselves social media mention elderly people by their names rain insults on them mention men of God go on Twitter or X write despicable things as if there is no fear and gradually it is becoming like a norm church if this is not broken our nation will come under a curse but I pray today that from this house the light of honor will begin to show forth to the nation your, your amen is in the wheelchair I said the light of honor will begin to show forth to the nation may people see us and see a people who know how to honor somebody clap your hands and say a big amen but honor is not a gift reverence for God is gradually leaving the church it's leaving the church the honor we give to men of God is fast disappearing it's fast disappearing today you see people when you, when you even when they even mention the name of men of God the way we mention their names oh Salasi Oh, Salasi. You know, trivialize it. Make it look like no. Yeah, but when you dishonor somebody God has honored, it becomes a challenge. I pray in the name of Jesus. Our generation shall be blessed because we honored in the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hand and shout a big amen. Oh, I said, wave your hand and shout a big amen. And you know, some say oh, it's because of the way sometimes men of God conduct themselves. That's why this is happening. It's not true. Way from Genesis, when we had Cain, men of God had misconducted themselves. It cannot be the reason why we don't know how to give honor to those whom honor is due. I believe this honor in our generation is a calculated attempt of the devil to destroy the next generation. Our children shall escape. We shall escape. I said we shall escape. Shout a big amen. When you read the law of impact, it talks about how to honor or the ways to honor a man of God receive him as you receive the Lord esteem him highly receive him with gladness submit to his spiritual authority make him wait make him wait 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 11 he says if we have sown unto you spiritual things is it a great thing is it a 
that we shall reap your canal things. Other version says, is it too much? Is it too much? If our father here has been a blessing to us, is it too much that the things God has blessed you with, that we can also be a blessing to his life? Look at your neighbor and tell the person, it is not too much. Uh, tap your neighbor and tell the person, it is not too much. Say it to yourself, say it is not too much. Amen. Amen. But the question is, why don't we do these things? There are some misconceptions and wrong assumptions that we need to correct. Number one, there are those who say, I wish I could honor the, the servant of God. But I don't have anything. So we need Riviera. Matthew chapter 13 verse 12. Matthew 18, to him who has, more shall be given. You you see, never despise what you have to bless the man of God with. Never despise it. But make sure whatever you give to the man of God is your best. Somebody say a big amen. Church, say a big amen. Number two, there are those who feel the man of God doesn't deserve any honor after all he's working for God his reward is in the hands of God God will reward him he should keep working hard when he goes to heaven they will meet him at the gate of heaven with brass band music and different gospel artists and so here on earth, no, that, that, don't worry yourself. But you see, you must not be in this category. There is an example of David and Nabal. David, David protected Nabal and his sheep and all his men. And then when David wanted to celebrate their feast, he said, Oh, go and tell Nabal, the one I've helped. That give me just one sheep. Now, I hear David person or top no, I no call neighbor. I say call Osman. I call I say call neighbor. I no catch us. Oh, mommy, you join back. And neighbor said, Now neighbor, who is David? Why any David? That I should give my sheep to him. I say me didn't join man. Who is David? Why any David? Because. Never felt that David didn't deserve anything. But for his wife Abigail, never would have been destroyed. May this honor never destroy us in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, there are those who say the man of God doesn't need anything. Hey, a whole archbishop. How do I go and give him this? Seat. No. Today you will give that seat. And now But a year by this time. Now I said a year by this time. Your check when it falls down, it will be breathing. I, I thought you would shout amen like you are the one I'm talking to. So never give to a man of God because he needs something but it is our duty it is our spiritual responsibility to give to the man of God number four if I don't give others will give to him oh you know the church is big oh, if I don't give you even notice it if I don't give him, others will give him. By all means, somebody will give him something. So, let me leave it. No, it is not done like that. Please tell your neighbor for me, it is not done like that. Tell somebody, it is not done like that. I didn't hear you. Tell somebody, it is not done like that. It must be part of your culture as a person. I asked in the first service. Let me try this again. I'm sure in the second service it may get better. How many of us know the shoe size of our father? 
Aye, size da, yeah, the shoe size. Let me see. shoe and Papua Oshie size. Daddy, I think it's worse in the second service. So. <laughs> ah, I'm seeing one, two, three, Bas four, five, six, six hands. Nipa in Siena mo na tamsa. How many of us Christmas? You must say ena bro nyada. We gave our father a Christmas gift. Let me see. Yade ache di e koma yeja. Let me see. The hands have reduced. Oh, please, let me see you. Your hands are up. God is blessing you. Yeah. One, two, three, four. So, a check. so you see, when you are thinking that if I don't give him, somebody will give him. Four people. Four. Let's assume there are others who don't want to raise their hands. So let's add about six more. We'll get ten. Not even up to one percent of this church. But day and night, this man is on his knees. It has seen him for you. I pray. Friday was his birthday. I won't ask any question again. But that notion, that misconception that if I don't give him, somebody else will give him. It is wrong. It is not true. There are those who also assume that once I pay my tithes, I've honored him. Because all the offering and tithe in the church, when we close from church, we gather it and put it in his car. And then he and Mama Baby will be sitting to, to read it. To, to count the money. When I saw the book, I said, anyway, he can read his money. Amen. But there are people who think that oh, the offering will go to his house, then he will call people, then they will come and come. No, it, it, in this church, there is a stringent measures of accountability put in place. Every single person is accounted for. And can I add that one of the top givers in this church is our father, the Archbishop. I'm not sure he's the richest. I'm not sure he's the the richest. I'm sure there are a lot of us here that God has blessed us maybe 10 times more than him. But because of his love for God, he's one of the top givers. Your offering and your tithe is God. Somebody said, you know, one time somebody came to me and said, oh, for... I was resident pastor then. Oh, for Archbishop's birthday, let's let's give him money to go and do something something related to ministry. That was when it occurred to me that ah, on his birthday, won't he chop? Why should you give him money and you are telling him that you should use the money to go and do to go and build a church building? If you want to build a church building or you want to do a crusade or organize a crusade, organize it. Why should his birthday money be what he should use to go and do something for? Please, I you understand what I'm talking about. Obi eba menchai no so eya oya ya papa e di na oda ya man is kanon fan kwa ya nyame adwuma na on the di adenti na sika no the mana o hwa say so di ya nyame adwuma o so to minya bi no the ban ho bra so and there are those who postpone their honor. Omo a omo tu omo ni di ni sheda. This birthday I know somebody will meet me at bishop and say oh, papa don't worry I'll come and see you. Eya na wo dem nim so obi be ka so papa and say o ma be ho. With my gift. Oh, Archbishop, you will laugh. I will spoil you. Seven years ago, you've been saying I will come. You've been saying I will come. He's still waiting for you to come. This year, may genuine repentance happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Please say amen. If you don't say amen, well, everybody will think you are the one I'm talking about. So hide it. Just say amen with joy so that they will know you are the one. Shout a big amen. 
and there are those who God have made very comfortable in life. But they don't see why they should honor him. They don't see why they should give to him. There is a group known as the Banner Group in the United States of America. In 2022, they published a research of pastors who were quitting full-time ministry. Ah, so for, so for Juma. And some were quitting entirely. Oh, I will I cry. And they discovered no one who say. that as much as 42% of pastors were leaving the ministry. Oh, ha, in 52% oh, ha, in were no leaving no. ministry no, because no. they felt unappreciated for what they do. Yes, sir, sir. No, 57% of the pastors said they were unable to pay their bills as they were growing. No, they are they don't want to die. They can't take care of themselves. So as they were growing, they felt, let me quit and look up to something else for money because the ministry and the people in their churches were not taking care of them. 27% of pastors report, reported that they had no one to turn to anytime they had a problem. May this never be the testimony of Perez Chapel in the name of Jesus Christ. May our father and his lieutenants and pastors never become businessmen because nobody honored them in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 27 says withhold not good from whom it is due. When somebody deserves your goodness don't keep it from him. Don't keep it from him. When, when somebody has done something that deserves honor, don't, don't, don't deny him. Don't deny him of that honor. Amen. Amen. Somebody told me, any time you withhold what you are supposed to give to somebody, the thing you withhold, it begins to fight you. It begins to fight you. May your money never fight you. Oh, I said, may your no money never fight you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 3 to 5 says, Is not this the carpenter? The son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph and of Judah and Simon. And are not his sisters here with us. And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is without honor in his own country. And among his own kinmen. Now the scripture above teaches. Mark. Oh, hey, Marco. Sorry. I said Mark. Ma All right. Mark. I said I mentioned Matthew, but it's Mark. Hey, Marco. Take note. Mark. Marco. The scripture above hey, yeah. teaches us few lessons. Hey, that number one, you cannot rise or receive above the level of honor you give. Number two, yeah, to know that one of the major tribe traps Christians must overcome. It's the trap of familiarity which breeds dishonor. The people were simply saying to Jesus, if you were an outsider, we would have accepted you and honored you better. There is a reason why people always because they come every day and they see the archbishop, Oh, it's it's one of those things. And this is the reason why a lot of people will give to outsiders what they've never given to their pastor before. One day I was in Germany. And I was talking to a pastor. And then he said his church member B has done something you will never forget. What was the problem? He said, I've pastored her 
and the, and the family for over 20 years. They have never given me a gift before. Somebody came to do a program next door. This my church member I a bought a Mercedes Benz and gave to the visitor. I know. He said, I'm not jealous. I said, I'm not angry. But I'm wondering if you could do this for an outsider. You couldn't even buy me a shirt for 20 years. And as he spoke, I could see tears in his eyes. May the Lord deliver us in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. God's power works where honor is available. And dishonor affects an entire atmosphere. Jesus couldn't do miracles there. Yes, went to me and yes, and Chan Neoho because this honor was activated in the atmosphere. God has blessed you. Yami Ashrao, have you ever honored God's servants? What did Yamin Kuani have you ever honored God's servants? What did Yamin Kuani? Yes, Anne. I'm asking, have you yes, ever sir. honored God's servants? What did Yamin Kuani have you honored him with what God has blessed you with? What did you need? Our dear Yamidi Ashra, what did you need? Oh, daddy, God bless you. Oh, daddy, God bless you. Daddy, oh, daddy, you will live long. As for the prayer, it is good. But after the prayer, let there be a physical manifestation that you are my father. You are my pastor. I salute the grace of God upon your life. And I honor you with what God has blessed me with. As you honor him, may God cause men to honor you. Oh, I said, as you honor him, may God raise people to honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout a big amen. There is what we call corporate honor. So the scripture we read did not point to any particular person. It was the collective that were talking among themselves. And so there can also be corporate honor. Next week, Sunday, is Founders Appreciation Day. What we are going to do, what we are going to do is corporate honor. That I'm coming with my blessing, with my gift. I'm coming with my seed. I will join it to yours. We will join it together and make it big and honor this man. That as a church, that as a people, as people in the Perez Dome. As parasites, we acknowledge you that God has used you to be a blessing to us. We don't take you for granted. And so we have come to give you what God has blessed us with. If that is a good idea, yes, those of you clapping your hands, may the Lord bless your life. So we can appear on the Founders Day with empty hands. No. no. Not with one CD and five CDs and 20 CDs and 100 CDs. No, but we can come. Everybody, we come and we put it together. Not like if I don't give. If I give him five CDs, so that brother, I'm sure you give him 10,000. That brother too is thinking that, oh, you would rather give 20,000. So you give... 100 Ghana, he gave 50. So, a whole church yes, we put you know, our honor together. Yeah, need you anywhere, boom. And then you look at it. Now, sure. And instead of it being an honor, sir, need you. you feel grieved. Now, that this you. is dishonor. Sir, we, uh, you May we never dishonor our father in the name of and Jesus Christ. Boy, yeah, and I said, oh, yes, if you don't say amen, they will think you are the one I'm no, talking to. Amen. I said, oh, May we never God. grieve our father in the name of Jesus and Christ. So that is corporate honor. There are blessed people in this church. Sometimes as young, young, some of us, we can come together and decide, look, let this year, next year, next two years, let's prepare ourselves. Let's buy our father a car. Yeah. 
Aye. There are people who, who can easily do it. When you go to other places, there are men of God who because people understand honor, on their birthdays, they line up cars. I'm not saying, and I'm not comparing us to anybody. This church is one of the best churches you can ever be in in Ghana here. I mean, so please don't get me wrong. We love God in this church. But we want to build a culture that we don't only honor God, but we also honor his servants. Somebody give Jesus praise. And then there is also what we call individual honor. Individual honor. That you go to a man of God. And as you go, you carry a gift. This is not done once a year. Periodically. That I must visit my father. In the office. At home. Something. Sometimes. Send something very presentable to the house. Sometimes just go to him in the office, the papa. This is just to come and greet you. Pray for me. Because individually, we must honor. You see, the corporate honor creates an atmosphere for blessings to be released. The individual honor finds its way into your personal life it finds its way into your family life it breaks yokes it breaks barriers so cooperate honor plus your personal honor no barrier will stop you in the name of Jesus Christ Ah, can I prophesy over three people here that this year being our year of God's power by the spirit of honor you shall run through every troop in the name of Jesus Christ I said you shall leap over every wall in the name of Jesus Christ lift up your hand and shout hallelujah Hallelujah. I can hear you wave your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Individual honor is important <laughs> on his birthday. Well, now and, and I'm saying some of the, I know it. Sometimes as resident pastor, I'll be there. People will line up, come and see him. And everybody's lining up to come and see him for prayer. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. However, it is time we imbibe a culture. A culture. A culture. It is a personal culture. Those who service idols, they don't go there once a, once a while. They will go periodically. They will go regularly. We have a man of God. He doesn't become a burden unto us. You know, Archbishop doesn't talk about these things. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't know as an individual make it a part of your life every month every quarter father I want to come and bless you today I may come with 50 Ghana CDs but don't write me off the next time I appear I shall come with 500 the next time I appear I am coming with 5,000 another time when I appear I am coming with 5,000 but not Ghana CDs is but in dollars. I prophesy with my eyes open. There are people in this house. A time is coming. You shall build houses for men of God. If your amen is the loudest, become the first person. A time is coming. There are people in this house. You will give cars like you are giving oranges. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout and receive it. But honor must be part of you. Honor must be part of you. How did you go through the whole year? You went through the whole year. You never visited Archbishop. You never presented any gift to him. No, something is wrong. So, there are pastors who say that as we are growing, that we have to quit the ministry. Some pastors have become by force businessmen. Some pastors have had to do other 
other things. Not because that's what they want to do. They are doing it because if they are to depend on church members, they and their children will go they will be hungry because everybody in church is thinking somebody will do it at the end of the day nobody did it it's proven here today I asked how many people gave me a gift in Christmas not up to 10 people in the church like this may this culture be broken in the name of Jesus Christ one of the things that individual honor does is that it connects us to the grace upon the man's life but like I told you next week we are coming for a corporate honor and as you come next week please don't come empty look at your neighbor and tell the person don't come empty no 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 if the person is not looking at you it means that the person Look at the person and tell the person, don't come empty. Tell the person, prepare. Huh? If I was a Nigerian, I would have said, prepare. Amen. Amen. But prepare. You have a whole week. Prepare. Now Get an envelope. Get a seed. But the individual honor connects you to a certain grace. Our father is a man that carries multiplicity of graces one of the grace I was talking about in the first service is the grace to have his children in order the children are in order they are, they are working in the plans of God may that grace come upon us in the name of Jesus Christ Look, there are people who have lost their children eh? and they, will, they wouldn't mind they will sell their homes they will give everything they have just to make sure their children are in order because of this grace we will escape that in the name of Jesus Christ. I said because of this gate, we will escape that in the name of Jesus. This morning before I take my seat, as the Lord spoke to me before I came this morning, I shall allow everybody here to connect to the grace for our children. We are connected to grace for our children. None of our children will go wayward in Jesus' name. None of our children will become vagabonds in the name of Jesus Christ. None of our children will become a proverb and a byword in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and shout a big amen. Amen. We are going to sow a seed. But this seed is the fact that we are connecting to the grace on our, on our archbishop. For our children. For our children. That our children will grow to become great. The same grace upon him that have raised Bishop Selassie. Raised Apostle Francis. Raised our sister Charlene. And Clementine. That grace must work for us. That grace, it will work for us. Lift up your hand and shout a big amen. We are going to pick an envelope. If you have it here, you bring it now. If you don't have it here, you bring it next week. Now, separate this. Separate this. You were free from what you are giving as your honor offering or your appreciation. You want to pick an envelope. One, two, or three. You want to do it for all of your children. You probably want to. Say, Bishop, I will sow a seed of a thousand Ghana cities and more for all of my children. So, if I have three children, if I, if I have three children, I'm picking an envelope each for all of them. A, a thousand cities, 500 cities. Quickly run and come and pick the envelope. Pick the envelope. Quickly, quickly. Everybody here. Everybody. Look. You will go and borrow money to pay school fees. This is not school fees. This is greater than school fees. To have the grace that preserves the destiny of our children. It is not school fees. Can I get more pastors to help with the distribution of the envelopes? Let's get pastors. Please come, come, come. 
This is not school fees. We ain't yet school fees. No. No. Heavy. This is more than that. We ain't Preserving the next generation. Say, I cry. I want to have to ask why I You probably don't have a child. If you are not Niba. But you know you have a child one day. You know you have a child one day. It could be a thousand cities and more. 500 cities and more. Now, this is a prophetic direction. This is a prophetic direction. So follow it. Follow it. Follow it. Squeeze yourself. Pick those envelopes. Write their children's name behind that envelope. If you have two children, pick two envelopes. If you have three children, pick three envelopes. If you have seven, God is with you. Shout a big amen. You said, Bishop, I can do 300 cities. You also want to sow 300 cities for all of your children, any of your children. Quickly rise up and come and pick it. Quick, let's be quick about it. 300 Ghana cities. 200 Ghana cities. Please rise. Come to, come to the pastors. Oh, okay, the pastors are inside amongst the people. All right. Yes, there are some, there are hands at the back. There are hands at the back. All right. Yes, there are hands. There are hands. Some of you, you are not married, you don't have children yet. This is the right time to do this. This is the right time to do this. In this generation, our children shall escape every decay in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have yours here, come and drop it on the altar. Your children will never see the inside of a prison in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear your amen. I said, our children will never see the inside of a prison in the name of Jesus. 100 cities. You can also do 100 Ghana cities. Wherever you are, lift up your hand. Let the ushers bring you the envelope. 100 Ghana cities. Quick. If you, and if your envelope is ready, come and drop it on the altar. There are hands at the back. I see hands at the back. I see hands at the back. You can also do a hundred Ghana cities. Hundred Ghana cities. If you are, please do it for all of your children. Pick one envelope each. When necessary, write the name of your child behind the envelope. That Lord, I'm planting this seed on behalf of my children. If they are wayward, they shall come back home in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody clap your hands and shout a big amen. Oh, please clap your hands and say a big amen. Your clapping is not born again. Please clap your hands and say amen. If your envelope is ready, any amount I didn't mention, you can also take it from the pastors. But if your envelope is ready, please bring it to the front. If your envelope is ready, please quickly. Bring it, come and drop it on the altar. If your envelope is ready, quickly come and drop it. If your envelope is ready, quickly come and drop it. Come and drop it. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Let's put our hands together and let's give Jesus a mighty clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to go ahead and take our second offering you want to go ahead and take our second offering you want to prepare yourself you want to sow a quality seed this morning you want to sow a quality seed this morning you want to give all right before we take our offering before we take our offering, we want to all bow down our heads and close our eyes. Let's pray before. If you are here this morning and you want your sins forgiven, you are here this morning. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You say, Pastor. Help me, I want my sins forgiven. If you are like that, please, wherever you are, lift up your hand. Let me pray with you. You want God to forgive you your sins. You want God to forgive you your sins. 
one of the ways by which you honor God is to receive his gift of forgiveness for you. If you want your sins forgiven this morning, wherever you are seated, please raise one hand up. Let me see you and pray for you. Yes, thank you. If you want your sins forgiven, raise that hand up. Let me pray for you. With that hand lifted up, can you please rise to your feet? Rise to your feet. Yes, you want your sins forgiven. You want your sins forgiven. Take your Bible. Take your bag. Walk to me in front here. Come. Yes, come. Please come. Come. You want your sins forgiven. Take your Bible. Take your bag. Amen. And walk to me in front here. Yes. Glory to Jesus. Could you please lift up your hand with me? I want you to pray this prayer after me. Church, let's all pray together. If you're watching us, you can also pray this prayer with us. Say with me, say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I come to you today just as I am. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. Come into my life and make my life a new person. Today, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I am born again. Amen. Put your hand on your chest. Father, thank you for this precious life. I ask in Jesus' name that you will establish your people in your kingdom. Let them never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Church, can we please rise up? If today is your first time fellowshipping with us, can you please wave your hand at me? Today is your first time here. In this oh, church, let's put our hands together for them. Yes, today is your first time. Please take your Bible, take your bag. Come. Take your Bible and your bag and come. Church, keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. We can show them. A deeper appreciation and a welcome yeah, than just keep clapping for them. God bless you. Thank you very much for coming. On behalf of our father, the Archbishop, who is the senior pastor of this house, we especially welcome you. I want you to follow this. Dear sister, she has something to tell you. After that, you come back and join us. Thank you. God bless you for coming. If you are clapping, do it better. You want to take out that offering, you want to sow a special seed of 200 Ghana cities or more, you want to give an offering of 200 Ghana cities or more, please come and drop it on the altar. Yes. You want to honor God with your offering, 200 Ghana cities or more. Yes. If you are watching us online, you can also join in by giving your offering. On star, star, star 800 star 1000 hash on all networks on all networks and it comes at no transaction fee if you are also on MTN you can do 0243 500 624 you also want to give 100 CDs or more please rise up and bring it 100 CDs or more please rise up and bring it if you are doing Vodafone um, and we Vodafone cash to you. Tessel, yes. Okay, yes. You want to give by Tessel. The number is 020 Numeria 020 316 
2084. If you are watching us from outside the country, you are here, you can also give 50 Ghana CDs or more. Please rise up and bring it. Those of you watching from outside of Ghana or watching from any part of the world, you can give through Send Wave or World Remit or Tap Tap Sam. Send. The name is Perez Chapel International and the number is plus 233. 20 or plus two three three and a plus two three three two four three two four three five zero zero five zero zero six two four six two four you can also do bank transfers on fidelity bank echo bank echo bank and other platforms paypal is also there God bless you. You have 20 Ghana cities. You want to rise up and bring it. You want to see the idea. No, sorry, not often. 20 Ghana cities or more. No, but for us, see the idea. No, 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 you also have 10 Ghana cities. Rise up and come. 10 Ghana cities or more. 10 Ghana cities or more. You have 5 Ghana cities, 2 Ghana cities. Any amount we've not mentioned. Any amount we've not mentioned. Any amount, Amen. before I take my seat, a lot of the things I share this morning, you can find them in this book, The Law of Impact. The Law of Impact. The work and reward of the pastor. I think it's one of the most important books to read. As a Christian. Because any Christian who knows the importance of honor will never be denied of their blessings in life. Once honor is out of your life, it leaves you very vulnerable. Even though you are a Christian, I will encourage us. Don't only buy this book. Keep copies somewhere in your room for tomorrow for your children. So that our families will be families that understand honor and appreciate the work and the reward of the man of God. That is an honor. Thank you very much for the privilege for the opportunity to stand on your altar. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's welcome our rest. Oh, Zilla, are you Yes, We can put our hands together for Bishop Oh, we can do better. We can stand to our feet and honor him and honor him. Yes, Jay and Nidia Amano. God bless you, Bishop Raymond. Yami, Enshra, also born Raymond. On that powerful, powerful word on honor. Someone to me, a woman, a people of honor. Yan Yan Crofa, a baby, a people that understand honor. Yan Yan Crofa, a Tinia, a man is on admission. A man, no, a dia, Saviano, pay. Please, you may kindly take your seat. I'm so better now, say. Friday was our father's birthday. If if you heard it and you had not prepared or done anything about it, 
It's also available during the week. You want to be there to honor him. And next week, Sunday, is our Founders Day. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Which a man of God, which a man took and sowed. Though it was the smallest of seeds. Yet with time, it becomes a giant of trees. What I like about that scripture is that the birds of the air come and find shade in it. The master seed, other people ate their master seed. Other people looked at it and it was too small and, and threw it away. Other people misplace their master seed. Yet the diligent one sold their master seed. And it became a giant of trees. And the birds who didn't have anywhere to go. What another man had planted that had become a giant tree, they came and found shade in it. You and I, a man saw a master seed instead of eating it or throwing it away he decided to plant it and the bible says that god sets people the solitary in families we didn't have anywhere to go we have found ourselves under somebody's master tree next week we want to come and honor our father and our mother when they, when they went through the damn water when they when, when there was no light so on and so forth they kept at the mustard seed and today it has become a giant of trees and today, wherever you find yourself, once you call Perez, everybody knows what Perez is. We want to appreciate this man and this woman of God. So, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So, next week, we want to come and honor them. And I believe that God speaks to people as to what they should do. And I believe that God will speak to your heart as to what that day you should sow. Come and let's be a blessing to them. Amen. Amen. But we have a video for our father. And, and then we we'll all rise and sing happy birthday for him after that. And then we we'll cut a cake for him. Video team, can we have the video? gentle shepherd, a patient teacher, an inspiring coach, a shining light, a wise master builder. Daddy, you have nurtured us in the ways of God, taught us the essentials of life, inspired us to do exploits, shown us the way by example, and have laid a solid foundation on which many of us can build for the future. Happy birthday, Archbishop Charles and Janassari. We love you, Daddy. Church, can we all rise? As I'm doing you now, I'm sorry. Happy birthday for Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Mami and the church board. Can we come? Sorry, I'm powerful. Church board members. Sorry, I'm powerful. Ninja na. Shall we please stretch forth our hands towards him? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that in your wisdom, you raised our father, the archbishop, and you gave him to us, to pastor us, and to lead us. We ask in Jesus' name that what you have done for him in the past 62 years you will do more in Jesus name Lord you will increase him in strength you will increase him in good health you will increase him in physical vital you will increase the oil upon his life you will increase the favor upon his life Lord you continue to deliver him from the hand of wicked and unreasonable men. Anyone that will set a trap for him may the trap backfire in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are digging a pit for him to fall may they fall into their own pit in the name of Jesus. We ask the Lord you will build a wall of fire around him and his family around his wife around his children and around everything that concerns him Lord cause him to rise higher and higher in this land of the living let him see your goodness on every side Lord we pray a year by this time we shall be here to celebrate another birthday in a more joyous way because of what you have done we give you praise we give you glory we give you thanks in Jesus name and let the church clap our hands and shout Amen happy birthday daddy Please, we may take our seats. Can we have the electronic announcements? Hello, family. Thank you for worshipping with us today. We are thrilled to welcome you to the Perez Dome family with warm greetings from our founder and prelate, Archbishop Charles Ajinasari, and our mother, Reverend Mrs. Vivian Ajinasari. As a church, our mission is to glorify God and spread Christ's love to the world with the compassion of Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Stay tuned for the latest updates on news and upcoming events. I'm Linda Safwaji. Good Friday, 2024. Join us for our special Good Friday service with Apostle Francis Ajinasari on Friday the 29th of March 2024 at 7 a.m. right here in the Paris Dome. Experience God's power as we commemorate the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. See you there. Founders Day 2024 Mark your calendars for March 31st at 7 a.m. as we celebrate our founders during our month of March. Great invitation service. Join us in honoring the visionaries behind our journey. Don't forget to extend this invitation to your friends and loved ones. And remember to come clad in your church cloth. It will be one big joint service at 7 a.m. in the Perez Dome. Also note, that there will be a Passover communion and anointing service on this day. March fasting and prayer. Precious one, 
Join us for our March fasting and prayer starting from Monday, March 25th through March 28th, 2024. Charge up with God's power. Don't miss out on this transformative journey. Precious one, I want to specially invite you to our service this and every Sunday at the Perez Dome, Jowlu Junction. The Bible says God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their distractions. I have a special word from God for you that will bring you healing, deliverance and turn your life around completely. If you are sick, troubled, struggling in your finances, your job or your family, the power of God's word will set you free. So join me at the Perez Dome this and every Sunday. When you are light at the Jolu Junction, just ask for the Perez Dome or look out for this big check building. We have pastors and trained people who will help you. Our first service is at 6.30 a.m. and the second service is at 9 a.m. Get ready for your freedom. I'll be expecting you this Sunday. God bless you. There'll be free buses available to shuttle you from Jolu to Seiko, Jolu to La Paz and to Malam Junction, Jolu to Achimota and to Mile 7, Jolu to 37 to Medina. Church, that's all we have for you today. Make sure to connect with us on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram by searching for our handle at the Perez Dome. And don't forget to like, follow, and engage with our content. Don't miss out on any of our weekday services. Tuesday morning for breakthrough time at 9 a.m., Tuesday evening for Rima time at 6 p.m., Thursday for our prophetic and deliverance service at 6 a.m. Until we meet again, my name is Linda Asafu Ajayi. Beloved, I hope you've been blessed by this service. But if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, pray this prayer after me. Dear God, forgive me all my sins. Lord Jesus, you died for me. You rose for me. Come into my life and make my life a testimony to those who know me. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name. Beloved, lay your hand on your chest. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that this dear viewer will know you and be established in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Precious one, I want to encourage you to attend a Bible-believing church close to you. And if there is a prayer chapel in your community, see the pastor and your life will never be the same. But if you are sick in any part of your body, lay your hand where you are hurting and let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that you stretch forth your healing hands and touch this dear viewer. Satan, you know me, you would obey me, for I don't come in my name. I come in that powerful and miraculous name of Jesus, and I take authority over every spirit of sickness and disease, and I ask that you be made every way to all. In Jesus' name, I pray, and I bind every spirit of ear problem, every spirit of eye problem, every spirit of back problem, every spirit of liver problem, every spirit of kidney problem, every spirit of paralysis and weakness, every spirit of growth in the name of Jesus. I ask that God's miracle working power will be made available in your life like never before. In Jesus name, I call it done. Amen. Beloved, join us same time next week. God willing, your life will never be the same. But before I sign off, if you are believing God for any breakthrough whatsoever, lay your hand on your forehead. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the God of breakthroughs and miracles. I pray that, Lord God, you will meet your people at the point of their need. Breakthroughs in jobs, breakthroughs in families, breakthroughs in marriages. I pray for those who are single that their partner will show up in the name of Jesus. And I pray for those believing for children. You meet them at their point of need. And I pray that, Lord, you visit your people like never before. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. Beloved, happy Easter in advance. And I want to say to all those who sent me messages for my birthday, thank you very much. And God bless you. I appreciate all the wishes and the prayers you prayed for me. And I pray that God will cause others to do it for you in your time of celebration. God bless you.